Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Well, so uh, we had a great visit with Bob Marshall and his son, Robert. So they're back in uh, Riverside, California, and uh, we're going to do something different today. You know, I've been noticing online a lot of people are making their own custom letterheads for typing, and I think that's a great idea. I haven't actually designed my own letterhead yet, but I do have an idea that I'm going to do today, share it with you, about a little typographic effect, or maybe a we call it a graphic arts effect, to do with typing paper uh, to give it a little kind of an interesting style. Uh, so stay tuned. You know the borders around the old Polaroid prints? It's kind of like a mottled, irregular, random kind of a border effect that you get. Well, that kind of effect has been copied a lot in the decades since Polaroid came out. And I thought it would be kind of fun to do kind of a border effect on a piece of paper that we can make a rectangular area in the middle of a page and then we can use it to type in. And it sort of defines the borders of our typing area. Perhaps you've seen this with wet plate collodion photography or daguerreotype photography, where these wet plate emulsions have these irregular kind of random uh, imperfections around the edge of the image. And I thought we would play with that. So we're going to need uh, some paper, some cardstock, and one of my favorite pens is actually the Pentel brush pen. So let's get our tools together and see what we can do. Well, I need to find uh, the kind of paper I want to use for this project. And I happen to have some of these, I think it's called Everbrights. It is a 28 pound paper that you get from the Staples office supply store. This particular one is kind of a tan color, uh, almost a brown color with a little bit of papery fibers in it. And I kind of like the look of it. So I'm going to get me a few sheets of that. And then uh, I'm going to need some cardstock. And what I've done here is I've cut a letter size piece of manila cardstock down to half size. And so if you look at our letter size sheet of paper here, if I put this cardstock in the middle and center it properly, you'll see that I have kind of a nice border around here. I like having the larger size paper around it. It's like putting a picture inside of a mat when you frame it. This is the Pentel brush pen and it is known by a model number GFKP on the cap here. The cap pulls off with a kind of a click like that. So it has a synthetic fiber brush tip that's very flexible and it's fed from a cartridge system that's very similar to a fountain pen cartridge. This is the FP10 Pentel cartridge. You can buy these in packs and when they run out you can uh, just pull them off and put a new cartridge on just like with a fountain pen. Artist and writer Austin Cleon uses these a lot and what he's done is with the empty cartridges he washes them out and then he takes a syringe, the kind used for refilling inkjet cartridges, and he refills these with colored fountain pen ink. So you can then have a colored ink brush pen effect, but we're going to use the standard black cartridge and these give a line effect similar to Sumi brush painting. Let's take a scrap of paper and I'll show you what these pens can do. So the tip is very flexible. In order to control the line thickness you have to control the pressure you're using on the brush and so what I tend to do is I keep one of my fingers resting on the paper and then I rest my hand on that finger so when I'm drawing the pen across the paper it's really being uh, it's drawing the weight of my hand on my finger and then I can control the tension of the brush or the pressure of the brush a little more closely so I can do really fine lines like this so this is the kind of uh, line work you might imagine with uh, the classic ink cartooning style right like crosshat shading and stuff like that I could do it like that and I, again you have to kind of run your finger use your finger as a support but then here's the great thing about the brush pen if you add more pressure to it it immediately you can get really wide kind of ink effect go from narrow to fat just by how much pressure you apply so it truly is like a brush right 
very cool and it so it does take some control the tip of it is very fine you have to use a very fine amount of control to get thin thin lines like these but it is very satisfying and fun to use so I thought this would be a great pen to use for doing our little border effect around our typing area so once again this is a practice sheet of paper another old uh, typing right here and uh, this is more like the weighted paper we'll be using, maybe 24 pound. Uh, so here's one of those two halves from the cardstock that I have already used. And so you can kind of see the effect we're going for. So the purpose of the cardstock is going to be a mask. And what I want is I want a very fine or straight line on the inside of the border. Uh, where the typing starts, but I'm on a kind of an irregular, more of an organic kind of a line on the outside. So, you know, we can just start, and there, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. I think when I first started, I was kind of doing like brush stroke effects like this along the edges, like that and that, so that when you take the mask off, you have this uh, effect here. But uh, there's also other ways to do this. Let me realign my mask here. Uh, so you can try to be a little neater and make a fine line, like a continuous line like this, instead of uh, more of a hatchy, cross-hatchy or irregular brush stroke effect. And I also sometimes like to go and overlap the corner lines a little bit. Almost looks like guidelines on a drafting drawing. So there's another kind of a line effect we can do, right? So let's show you some examples. So first of all, here is the first one I did. And for reals, if you will, <laughs> for reals. So you notice, um, perhaps, let me go up here in the corner. You'll notice the inside of this border is rather nice and straight, which is what we want. You can see how it's defined by the cardstock. But then the outside is more kind of feathered and more organic looking. So there's the first one. I did go a little bit too far on this corner, but there's the first one. And we'll talk about the chop here in a few minutes. And then the next one I did is kind of the same effect but just a bit thinner. I didn't want it quite as dramatic. Here I've done kind of this free kind of brush strokey effect but I'm making it a little bit thinner not quite so dramatic. Again I like the way the corners kind of overlap a little bit and yeah I went over a little bit there on that corner as well but it kind of has this kind of loose organic feel to it and yet it defines a nicely laid out rectangle for typing within. Okay, this third one, I tried to be a lot more careful about the line weight, and I tried to do it in one continuous motion of the brush pen rather than choppy kind of brush strokes. I just kind of made a very consistent, as good as I could do, you know, a line, a continuous line, keeping in mind that the variations in the pressure of the pen why dramatically affects the weight of, or the line weight of the, of the finished mark you make, but I really like the look of that very nicely defined. I like this black against this tan colored paper and my little red stamp chop which again we'll get to in a minute. And then here's another one that used that same effect as the previous one at more of a continuous line but I tried to do this a little more bold so uh, I like the way this looks. Again I'm, I'm not overlapping the corners quite as much. What's cool about this uh, technique is that every page you do is different. It's all unique. No two are alike because your brush strokes are never perfectly the same every time, which is a very cool thing. And then finally, I just uh, had this crazy idea. Maybe we could just define the borders or the corners, I should say, instead of the entire border. And so here is, let's see, uh, focus. And I did uh, accidentally smear it a little bit. So when you do this, uh, give it a minute or so to dry before you rub something across it like your hand. But I kind of like this uh, border effect, and we'll see how this works, too. And now let's talk about the chop stamp that I put on here. Well, sometime around uh, 20 years ago, maybe the early 2000s, I was uh, on a business assignment up in Portland, Oregon area, and I happened to buy this wallet, Fossil brand wallet. And since then, I've used this tin for various things like uh, sealing wax. No, this is not the wax you put on your ceiling. It's for sealing envelopes. 
but I did buy this trefoil stamp, which has become sort of my uh, my chop, my little logo I like to put. So it's an, it's an ancient uh, medieval three circular swirls in a triangular arrangement. We'll see there in a second there. So I use that and I use a little, one of these mini little red, um, this is Colorbox brand stamping pad thing. And then uh, the thing that really makes this uh, practical is I have a little piece of paper and you can see I've used this for years. A little scrap of paper that I folded in quarters and then cut a square hole in that's centered on the paper. So let's see how I do this. So what I do is I'll take the piece of paper and I will center it horizontally so that I have equal amounts of line here and here. I guess I could turn it for you guys like that. So equal amounts of line like that roughly and then I center the hole between the bottom uh, border and the edge of the paper so we're kinda like that. And you know it's not perfect but it's sort of a approximation, right? Every, everyone is a little different. Okay, so one thing you might notice about this stamp is that they manufactured it a little bit off-centered, right, toward the corner. So uh, just keep that in mind, the little window. So I'm just going to stamp it, wet it with ink, and what I do is I roll it kind of left, right, up, down, like that. Take that off. And uh, that's my little chop that I kind of use. And I really like the effect of the tan paper, the black Sumi-like brush ink, and then the red stamp, the red chop. It's, it's a kind of a neat idea. You could even take a fine mechanical pencil and then do a little signature near the chop, or even something like a date code and a signature around it. So it gives it kind of that cool look to it I really like. So the whole point of this, of course, is that we're making our own custom typing paper. So I thought what I'd do now is, since I've already done a number of these, I think I'm going to do a really even thicker, sloppier looking border. Uh, so we want to just hold the mask down so it doesn't move. And, uh, you know, doesn't, we want to try just to do a, more of a side of the brush pen. And you can get much more thicker lines, right? Just like a wide swath of ink. And then you don't necessarily have to be real consistent about it. You can make it feather. Right, you can feather it kind of like, not, not completely dark. Uh, and this, the nice thing about this, of course, is that uh, the inside of this border will be nicely, sharply defined by the edge of the, of the mask we're using, right? Carefully peel this off and not smear any ink. So, hey, there's a very interesting effect, I think. And then you could even get uh, even crazier with it, and you can do something like try to scribe a very straight thin line on the outside keeping in mind as I said earlier that the thickness of the line is directly dependent on the pressure of your hand and in order to get a thin line it takes a lot of control of the weight of your hand so I'm just resting the weight of my hand on my fingers sliding my hand on my fingers and I'm not supporting my hand on the brush. Okay, so yeah, there's you a little border that we can type within. But of course, we're going to need to uh, put our chop down. There we go. A ah, nice little handmade typing paper effect. Well, I really like the way this project came together in the end. The finished typed sheet just looks so cool with this light tan colored paper and the contrast between the black ink and the red ink and the red chop stamp at the bottom. And it's so neat the way every one of these pages is uniquely different in terms of the inked border. And it offers so much possibility. I'm just, you know, scratching the surface here, but hopefully I'm going to make up a batch of these pages and then I can use them for letter writing and also posting blog articles. And it's very fun to do this because it employs several different, uh, you know, artistic or creative crafty things I like to do. The, the chop stamp thing is something I've done for a long time. The, the brush pen is 
uh, such a cool little tool. I really love it. And of course, combining those into this effect that works really well with the old typeface on this Corona 3. It makes it look really nice and I'm happy about the way it came out. And of course all of this is really designed to be inspiration for you to make your own kind of graphical effect on your typing paper. And in any case, do something like this. Stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye bye for now.